many of you have probably seen the video where I reviewed this, the, uh, the windless gray Viking tunic. Um, and my opinions of it weren't exactly favorable uh, for this thing. Um, today, I figured I'm going to modify it so that it's actually usable for something. Um, it's, it's a great costume piece. Uh, if you do LARP or SCA and stuff like that and you don't really care too much about authenticity, you just want something that looks the period that that, that is fairly affordable. This is this is totally totally good for that. Or if you want to wear it for like medieval themed clothing, clothing that's great too. But um, for reenactment, it's not the greatest. And to make it anything other than abysmal, um, there would be so much I have to do to it, which now I'm gonna just do. Um, and really. That's about it, and and I don't think it, I don't think it's very good to turn this into a usable kirtle the way that it is, uh, you know, without the, without any gores or anything in it. It's just flared sides, um, and the sleeves are all one piece and all that stuff. It's just so much work to actually do that because you cut the sleeves off, cut out the gores and all that stuff, sew them back in, whatever. So, I'm going to turn it into a temporary captain. Uh, so my girlfriend has something warm to wear for this, uh, the next show that we're doing, uh, starting tomorrow, actually. Um, and basically what that involves is removing all of this trim and replacing it with strips of uh, silk, uh, because there were silk trims founding period, uh, as well as splitting the front and putting trim down that. Um, so the first thing I have to do is remove all of the, uh, the trim, which will take a considerable amount of time. So, so the tool that you need to do this is a seam ripper. Um, this one is old and kind of dinged up, and it's missing a little plastic ball, rubber or uh, a rubber or plastic ball that's on the hip. So you can't really use it to its full potential. Um, but these are very handy, and it's very good to make sure you have a nice sharp one. Um, so what you do with this is you simply slide the little pick end under the stitch, and then you cut it. And because I can't use it to its full potential by peeling between the two things and using the ball to ride along and just rip the stitch seams right out, I have to go the slow method, which is actually to pick every five stitches or so and then go back along and just lift the threads out and eventually end up pulling a piece of thread out. And, you know, um, this stuff might just depending on how strong their thread is, might just tear away. Um, but um, that might, depending on what you're cutting, accidentally tear the, uh, the woolen fabric, and you don't want to do that. And so once you have a little bit open like that, you can kind of, uh, you can kind of go along and peel the two parts, two pieces apart, and cut, and then pull a little bit, and then cut, and you keep going along until all, all of it's off. Um, yeah, and it's just a, just a long, long process. So now that all that's removed, that's garbage now, uh, the next step is actually to cut, well, first figure out how I'm going to split this down front. Uh, the easiest way that I think I'm going to be able to do it is to actually just <clears throat> pick pick my center um, and then tear it. That's about it, as easy as it's going to be. Um, so I have to cut through a few layers here. Right down the middle. one little known thing that a lot of people get worried about is that fabrics actually tear if they're sewn on straight in the right grain orientation they tear straight 
Um, and that's because they, uh, you can't tear diagonally because of the way the, the, the grain of the fabric is. So if you try to tear it diagonally, it'll kind of lock up on you. But if you tear between the warp or between the weft, it should work. Uh, silk is a little bit different. Silk only really tears in one direction. Um, and that, I think, is just the way that it's woven. Well, most fabrics will tear that way. You know, you'll get a little bit of a rough edge, but in a lot of cases, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that rough edge won't hamper you at all. Uh, so now what I can do is just cut this little nubby section off on both sides, just so that it matches. So it's a nice smooth, uh, smooth line. So. Now the next step I have to do is start pinning all of this to this. Um, I may, instead of doing a trim all the way around the bottom, I'm probably just going to uh, fold this over and just hem it. Um, so folding it back the other way, because when they did the trim they folded the edge over and sewed the trim on. I'm going to flip it this way and st hand stitch this all the way around and then do the trim that goes up here I'm going to leave the existing hem on here so it's a nice, a nice trim that just goes down the front um, so I'm going to get to that and see you guys in a bit so I finished sewing this down uh, flipping the trim, it was a bit of a trick over the the seam here because of how bulky that is and the way that it was sewn um, but I managed to sort of do it in a somewhat presentable way um, now what I have to do is trim this edge that I tore um, in a nice presentable way. So what I've done is taken these strips of silk, so two of them together so I have the length that I need. Um, and what I'm going to do is go to the inside, take my strip, fold the end over, and then fold the whole thing in half and then pin it to the inside along that edge so that's that's the first step and then I sew that to the whole garment uh, that way and these, these really these really simple strong uh, dressmakers pins are perfect for this and it's kind of hard to pierce the the silk because of how tight the the weave is. Uh, and so from there, I just go along. And because of how straight this seam is, if it weren't for the fact that I was sewing on silk to wool, uh, wool having a lot of stretch, silk having almost none, I probably wouldn't worry even about pinning it so much. Maybe pin the top part and freehand the rest, but because of the, the nature of what I'm doing, I am going to pin the whole thing. Um, and then when I get down to the bottom, uh, what I'll do is, before I get all the way down, I will um, I'll trim the excess off and fold under a little bit and then pin that. So I'm just going to continue pinning. Uh, there's no sense in uh, me filming that because you know it, it'll just be a long video of me pinning each individual piece for the first long while so nobody needs to see that so now that I have this sewn on the uh, the next step is really just taking this folding it around the front and doing that for as much of it as you can maybe pinning a little bit uh, and trying to keep it so that it lays nice and flat um, and then stitching it along the edge to the front of the caftan. And so that's the basic for the front two seams. And then after that, it's really just a matter of um, attaching a string of it here and a string of it there on both sleeves. Um, so I'm going to do all that. Uh, the sleeves I might show how I do it again, um, just because it, it is a little bit of a different process, but I will probably 
do that. But this will all take a long time, and again, nobody needs to see me sitting there doing... Uh, notice you, nobody needs to see me sitting there doing that for that amount of time. Um, it's going to take a very long time to do. So, uh, I will see you in a bit. So now that the, uh, the binding is sewn on there, uh, I went ahead and sewed on one of the cuffs. And how I ended up doing that, because of this lumpy seam here, I couldn't just do kind of like the binding. I actually just took same width of strip and just folded the edges over, ironed it so that it was somewhat easier to deal with. Uh, and then starting at the seam, working my way around, pinning it on as I go. And then when I get around to the end, so I'll just use this to sort of demonstrate. You get around to the end and you have that raw edge. Uh, I just took it and folded this over, cut it off to length, folded it over, laid it on, and then I stitched around one side, across this seam, and then around the other side, which ends up being that. Which I don't think looks too bad. Um, it's certainly better than what was there before, and it's certainly better than trying to mess around with this thing. Uh, so next is around here where this really crappy seam is. I'm half tempted to just take, the, take that entire seam out, uh, flip it the other way, and sew it again so that it's all facing inward. And I may still do that so that there's no... the double the double seam thing it there it just doesn't work for me uh, very much. Um, so I may still do that. Um, but I'll probably get the other side done, at least on the cuff, and then see what I think. So, it's finished. Uh, it's not necessarily the most perfect thing in the world, uh, but it's certainly better than it was. Um, I might post pictures of it uh, from this weekend, maybe, uh, either on the Facebook or um, Facebook page, or the or just the end, at the end of this video, maybe both. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's done. So thank you for watching.